Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. We have Eric Carlson officially an all-star, Philip Bysted's coming out party at World Juniors, and Ben Gidro wins gold. So a lot of stuff to talk about today. No Ducks preview. It's the Ducks. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. You're Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin, San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can watch this on YouTube as well. And not doing a Ducks preview because uh, this is the fourth time in, like, less than 40 games that the Sharks have played the Ducks. It's the Ducks. You can go listen to any one of the other Sharks-Ducks previews I've done. It's basically the same thing. Like, they, they've played... 10% of the schedule have been against each other um, so far this season. And there's just more fun stuff to talk about. So um, so we're going to start by talking about, of course, one, Eric Carlson uh, officially being named a all-star. It was no doubt. Um, we'll get into that. And then we'll also get into World Juniors. So we're going to talk about um, Bystead. We're going to talk about Gaudreau. And then we'll talk about some of the uh, some of the prospects who kind of stood out to me throughout the entire tournament. But we got to start with Carlson, of course, because we are locked on sharks. And Eric Carlson, of course, is a San Jose Shark, named an All Star uh, for the seventh time in his career. Um, it's weird; he gets voted. He always go in pairs, so he got it's like every you know he goes two years in a row, and then it's like a, a little skip, and then two years in a row and a skip. So. You can just go ahead and assume he's going to be in there next year as well. So, um, but no, Eric Carlson, easily the first choice for the Sharks representation. So again, it's a quick reminder: every team has one player represented, uh, representing them. Uh, like last year, Seaman Meyer, Tomas Hurdle got to go a couple years ago, and then there's a big fan vote um, to try to get the other players in as well. So, um, ninety point two Meyer needs to get into the, that. That is, he is the best representation for the Sharks. I think Carlson and Meyer are, would be the best representation. Um, I'm not sure if Timo is going to get in. Um, he's more than deserving, but of course, you know, with fan votes, um, Sharks, one, are very bad. And two, you know, it's we, we've seen this all the time where players can get voted in who maybe aren't deserving, but they come from bigger fan bases and you know you can kind of get the uh the old ball of momentum rolling on that and then a guy who gets in over a guy like Timo Meyer who deserving last year 35 goals this year I feel Timo Meyer is is more deserving uh of a all-star ballot selection especially because he is on pace for 50 goals and 90 point Timo Meyer lives and he's having a career year and you guys have watched the Sharks because they're bad uh but you know where this team would be, be without eric uh, carlson and timo meyer and i think timo meyer is very deserving so we will see we will get the uh vote for timo meyer uh selection going here really soon but back to eric carlson um i wrote about this in my five things you learned in december um on fear the fin but just some of the like insane stats that Eric Carlson has put up and why he is worthy of being a all-star and second right now in, in Norris odds in the month of December, Eric Carlson, uh, 19 points, 17 assists, two goals, uh, 13 of his 19 points came at even strength. Eric Carlson, the shark scored 38 goals in the month of December Carlson contributed on half of them. So again, Carlson is contributing to half of the entire San Jose Sharks goals. The Sharks scored 38 goals in the month of December. 
Eric Carlson, half. Half of point. He had a point, either a goal, he scored the goal himself, or he had a point that led to one of those goals. Um, it's ridiculous what this man is doing right now. Um, yeah, like I, I, I've, I don't know what, what else to say about Eric Carlson, but I'll try. Point in every game of the month, um, including his third four-point uh, output of the season. King Carl also hit his 700th career point uh, in December as well. 871 in 871 games, the fewest for any active defender. Um, I just saw Carmen David already has 500 assists, which is uh, mind blowing. Because um, yeah, it's just how fast he accumulates points. But anyway, Eric Carlson went. Eric Carlson is on the ice at five on five. The Sharks have created 184 high danger scoring chances. That's the most by any player, even more than one Connor McDavid. The Sharks have created 463 scoring chances at five on five when Carlson is on the ice. The most in the NHL by one player. Eric Carlson is having a career year. Very much warranted this all-star selection and we're hope hopefully this is just a small step towards Eric Carlson winning his third Norris. Uh, the tried nor I for, for, for Carlson would be amazing. You know, it, it's, I, I've talked about it a bunch of times. Eric Carlson is very good and there has been some dark times with him being in San Jose, but it, it's so great. I love seeing how much the, Hockey community is just rallying around Eric Carlson being good again. Um, and he deserves it. Eric Carlson deserves it. So, yeah. So, Eric Carlson will um, going to be at the All-Star Game in Florida. Um, I think that's end of February. When is the All-Star Game? I should know this. Uh, but he will be there. Now the goal is to try to get Timo Meyer um, there next. That would That's kind of February 4th. Sorry. Um Getting Timo Meyer there because I think Timo Meyer is well, well deserving. So I know they're doing a fan vote and Twitter votes and all that fun stuff. So uh, keep an eye out how you, we, we've had the EK65 propagandist. The Timo propaganda machine is going to start cranking out here soon as one, we get Timo Meyer to the All Star game. And two, uh, we get Timo Meyer locked up in Teal for a very long time. Hopefully, that's, that's the deal. So before we continue, though, and we start talking about World Juniors, talk about Philip Bystead, his coming out party, Ben Gaudreau winning the gold, and some other guys who uh, I really stood out to me, especially those draft-eligible guys. Um, do want to take a quick break. Uh, I'll let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Built Bar. Built Bar, the best-tasting protein bar out there. And right now... They've got some fun, exciting news. You want a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories. You got to try a built bar. You get through the holidays. Of course, you're eating terribly. And now it's new year, new me. You got to try to kind of get back into shape, start those new year resolutions. That's where built bar can really come in, help you out because it's good. They taste good. For starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. They have great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, and only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And the great thing about them now, this is a cool thing. You don't have to just order them and wait for the box. You can just go to the store to buy them. Um, of course, if you want, built.com. they got new flavors all the time, so you can go see what they've got coming out. Or you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Go pick them up. Uh, Walmart, go to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of built bars. They got a four bar box of cookies and cream, double coconut or chocolate puffs. If you go to Sam's Club, you can get the big box of 13 with uh, their hit flavors brownie batter and churro. So make sure you go check them out. Or again, built.com. I like the, uh, the box that's got a little bit of everything in it so we can kind of try them all. So go check those out right now. All right. Let's talk about, we'll start with Philip Bystead, who I think had a huge, he had his kind of coming out party. And especially for a lot of us who, again, I tried to watch as many, I try to watch SHL games when I can. 
they're on at 10 a.m. Uh, local time. And, you know, it's sometimes it can be hard to find a stream uh, if you're, you know, kind of sailing the the high seas there, trying to find a stream to watch. And so I try to watch when I can. And I've caught a couple games of Bystead. And, you know, you he's playing against grown men. Um, again, 18-year-old kid playing against grown men. So sometimes, you know, you have to keep that in mind with him. So seeing him play against his peers here, right? Um, other kids his age, some of the best in the world. Granted, some of the best in the world, right? Connor Bedard, his generational talent, right? You have Shane Wright, who was a top four pick last year. Um, you know, you have Yurich, you have there's there's a bunch of guys, you know, uh Dylan Gunther, a top 10 pick. You there's a plethora. Was Gunther a 10? Yeah, anyway. Plethora of, of talented, talented players, even among his own team, Team Sweden, right? Fabian Lassell, the high pick for the Boston Bruins. Um, you have, you know, all the 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 guys from last year's draft, as well as Bystead. You have Leo Carlson, who's going to be a top three pick in this upcoming draft. And Philip Bystead was great. He, you know, he was his game, I don't think, is as flashy. As some of these other guys, you're not going to see as many of the highlight reel type of things, but he did what was needed for it. He fit into his team, right? Um, you know, again, when you especially you playing with Leo Carlson, that's going to help. Leo Carlson, again, is a top three pick in this upcoming, in a very loaded draft. Philip I said was a end of the first round pick in a weaker draft last year. But I thought I said played really well and he showed a lot his his ability to play in all three zones his back checking his defense getting to the net which is something the i, I talked with nick nolenberger about where you know this especially the cuda they don't really have the those guys who are going to be kind of the that's not their play style right and that's fine that everybody you know you, you don't want to uh what is it shove a a square peg into a round hole type of thing, right? Having William Eklund kind of play net front, that's not what William Eklund does. So you need to have a little bit of diversity among your players. But, you know, I was very much on the pick Brad Lambert, pick Brad Lambert. I still think Brad Lambert is going to be really good. But Mike Greer and Doug Wilson Jr., they might have made the right pick here. You know? I think by set skill set, especially compared if you have like a, your Bordelos, your Eklunds, and your Robins, and whomever else, I think what he does is different than those guys, right? And you saw that in in this tournament. How many of by set goals he he showed diversity in the way he scored too, right? A couple sweet sweet snipes, especially um, in the the bronze medal game. It's a couple he had plenty of you know. Had some of those nice snipes, but how many goals? I'm going to get to net. I'm just going to be bigger and stronger than the guy I'm playing against, and I'm going to be able to, to win the puck battle and knock it home. You saw that today. Scored a goal with 21 seconds left. He got to the net bigger, stronger than the defenseman. I know there was two guys at the net. He was able to make a play with 21 seconds left to – tie the game and send Sweden into overtime. So again, I still really, really, really am going to do, I'm going to be keeping an eye on, on Brad Lambert and how he does. Cause that's always going to be kind of that, like the one that got away and you wonder type of thing. But I think the sharks might've just made the right pick here. Um, and knowing they got someone who can fit in with the rest of the sharks prospects and make those guys better and not, you know, whatever it seems like Bryce whatever he needs to do to help his team, he is willing to do that. So if he needs to go to the net and be net front presence and you have hopefully one day a Bedard, a Leo Carlson, Adam, whatever kind of Eklund running around doing stuff. And by said is kind of there to help bring it, bring it home and, and kind of add some diversity to the line. That's what you want to see. So um, really, really impressed with his per 
his performance over uh, the tournament. So he ended up with 10 points in seven games. One thing, though, one thing to keep in mind, right? It's one tournament. So we see it all the time. Guys, guys can get really hot, play really well during that time. He played really well during this time. So I don't want to make too, too much of it. Now, if he goes back to SHL and SHL and you kind of see maybe he earns a, a promotion to the second line or he starts kind of producing more, maybe this is kind of that confidence builder that will really help propel. Not that he's having a bad season at SHL, but you kind of maybe – this might be the thing where you can kind of take that next step and kind of help to build some confidence and – you know, continue his development and kind of help to reach that next level for him. So um, again, I said he finished tied for seventh in points um, with 10 points in seven games. Love to see that Um, goals. He had four. So he was, you know, four goals, six assists like that. That's had four penalty minutes. Okay. Whatever. Um, Plus minus, if you're in a plus minus, plus eight. Again, plus minus is not my favorite stat, but, you know, it's not like there's a ton of players that you can, a ton of stats that you can kind of gather from from a small tournament like that. But um, I think you have to be, as a Sharks fan, you should be walking away from this tournament feeling really, really good about this bicep pick, especially for a lot of us who, you know, we, we caught a game here or there in the SHL, but kind of seeing him be the main focus of the team and not a third line center that he's been in the SHL right now. So and kind of playing against his peers and seeing, okay, how is he doing against other guys his age and kind of more of a, I don't want to say fair competition, but you know, again, it's just, you're not playing, he's not playing against 30 year old men that he's been playing against in the SHL. So um, you got to be feeling really, really good about by said, um, and about that pick right now. So still, let me keep an eye on uh, Lambert, but I think um, by said might be the, have been the right pick. Before we continue to talk about Ben Gaudreau and then some of the guys that I was really impressed with um, coming out of the, uh, uh, coming out of the World Juniors Tournament, do want to let you guys know about our friends over at the Locked On NHL Prospects Podcast. Thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first uh, listen every day. Now go check on the Locked On NHL Prospects, your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the draft. I mean, you guys, you guys know here at Locked On Sharks, we love, I love doing the draft, doing the draft profiles, kind of how do this fit, you know, kind of looking at mock drafts and all that fun stuff and kind of figuring out where players fit in an organization. If you like that, imagine that every day. So go check out Locked On NHL Prospects, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. All right. Ben Gaudreau. Congratulations to Ben Gaudreau. Um, I know probably didn't have the tournament that he was maybe hoping for and expecting. You know, that first game, a little rough. But again, the first game they were playing, uh, Chetsia, who they had to beat in the for the gold medal. It's not like they were playing... You know, I think we were maybe a little shocked by that first game, but as uh, the tournament kind of went on, uh, Czechia really, really showed what they were made of and had a great tournament, an outstanding tournament. So you can look back on that performance and be a little disappointed in that first game, um, and that's totally fine. And I'm sure he he probably felt that way, but he bounced back, played me. You know, next game he got a shutout. I know it was against lesser competition, but he was there. Had a shutout, did what the team asked for him, you know, was the first guy, I mean, on his Instagram, you know, congratulating Milik, um, you know, his teammate there. He won gold. That's impressive. I don't care. I don't care what you, he was good enough to be on the team that won gold. So super happy for, for Gaudreau. Um, You know, like he's won gold on U18 team, 18 team, and he's won gold now on a, under 20 team so he wins <laughs> yeah um again maybe not the tournament he wanted um his final stats um were again he had one with 82 um or 0.82 save percentage 338 goals against average again 
I think that that game against Czechia, you were, you can look back at that and be like, yeah, the game was bad. But again, I think Czechia was way turned out to be way better than any of us expected for it. So, um, congrats, congrats to Gaudreau. Um, enjoy, enjoy your, uh, enjoy your, your celebration. Have fun. I hope you know. You he has a gold medal that he gets. You know, gets to wear for the rest of his life. So, um, happy for him. Um, two seconds. We'll. Team Canada, we we know what's going on with Team Canada, and it's tough. You root for the kids, right? I'm really happy for all the kids who won. A lot of these, you know, kids, all these kids had nothing to do with what happened when prior instances of Team Canada. Um, if you don't know about it, a quick Google search, um, you'll be able to find out quite easily. I don't want to dig into that right now, um, but you should be well you you should be if you're listening to this you're you're probably well versed in what's happened with with team canada over the past over the last few years um and then the iihf president saying maybe this is the medicine that'll help so no winning winning doesn't solve accountability issues um again you can be very very happy for these kids you know shane wright look on his face right dylan gunther scoring the goal and just, you know, he scored a golden goal. Like there's not many people on this earth who have scored a golden goal. He's done that. He's one of the few people on this uh, walking on this earth who have scored a golden goal. You should be happy for these kids, right? These kids played hard. They represented their country. Well, they just want to be there to play get, you know, it's what's happening up top. And, so um yeah that that's my quick soapbox on it um it's gross that that was the what the iih iihf president his his wording of that um i feel it's really gross it, it's tough that these these poor kids are gonna you know gonna have to live with or the, the the survivors of of that and that's kind of how they get shoved aside because Team Canada won gold. And again, very happy for Gaudreau. Very happy for all those kids. You know, living a, a once in a lifetime experience for for most of these kids um, of what, what they went through. But again, the winning solves everything is, is just a terrible, terrible way to go about it. So um, anyway, some of the guys I was really impressed with, um, I think we have to start, well, I mean, Connor Bedard, of course, we know we knew what Connor Bedard is, um, but then him going out there and showing it like that, um, he's gonna be the number one pick. You can stop any of this, like, oh, maybe Adam Fantilli. You know, no, like, it. If if he wasn't the number one pick, I think this tournament um, all but locked it up for him um, again. <laughs> so here, Connor Bedard. Seven games, nine goals, 14 assists, 23 points. Um, I'm scrolling to find Fantilli. Adam Fantilli, yes. Um, that That's how... Adam Fantilli, who's going to be the second pick. And again, I'm trying not to put too... You don't put too much stock into one tournament, different roles. You know, of course, you're going to get put Adam Fantilli. You're going to put guys like Shane Bernard... Uh, Shane Bernard, Shane Wright, Connor Bedard. You're going to be putting those guys in your top positions, right? And Adam Fantilli has been having a great season at Michigan. But again, it's hard not to compare Adam Fantilli had two goals and three assists in this tournament, right? So that just, I think it's not, not, doesn't knock against what Adam Fantilli did. It just shows how much Connor Bedard is just on another level. So um, again, if Connor Bedard's in Teal. Um, we can, that's a, if Connor Bedard ends up being in Teal at some point, um, that is a whole different situation and on where the Sharks rebuild is at. I think it changes everything. But some of the other guys, though, Leo Carlson, man, he really, really impressed me. Um, his scoring, I think his toughness, right? He took an elbow to the face. He's got the, I, I screenshotted it on my Twitter. You got the blood coming down. He's out there competing. Um, you saw the chemistry with him and Bicep already. Um, I think he's going to be the draft's best consolation prize. If you miss out on a Fantilli, you miss out on a Connor Bedard, 
you're going to feel really, really happy about getting uh, Leo Carlson. And I just like more Swedes on the Sharks. I'd be super happy too. So we'll dig into Leo Carlson more as the draft kind of goes. Is you know, of course, look at the draft pros and stuff like that. But um, Leo Carlson, I, I was super, super impressed with his tournament again. Kind of the first time really, really getting to watch him. Um, Thomas Mulek, the goalie for for Canada, who's undrafted, um, should be drafted. He will be drafted. Um, and then um, I'm going to say his name wrong. Uh, the the Czech goalie, Tomas uh, Savetsikic. I'm I'm sorry, Liz. Liz is going to kill me when she hears that pronunciation. I apologize, but those two guys right there. Um, yeah, they they will be on a NHL. They will be in an NHL system um, this summer. It's those guys really impressed me um, with what they they're kind of their poise, how they played. So, um, and I, I talked about Team Czechia. I, I was really impressed with their team. Uh, it looks like Columbus has some really good draft picks uh, coming. You know, some some good guys um, coming in down the pipeline. So shout out to Jay. But you know. Super fun tournament, um, you know. As I've my hockey has kind of gotten more and more kind of in depth over the the years, especially since I started this podcast. Uh, World Juniors is becoming a, a bigger, bigger kind of part of my life, and how much I enjoy watching it and seeing these kids, and you know, rooting for these kids, especially the Sharks prospects. You know, um, I was fully one hundred percent Team Sweden today over Team USA, um, just because I wanted to see uh, uh, Bystead move on, right? And rooting for Gaudreau, talked about Team Canada, but rooting for Gaudreau and and what he is, uh, what he's been doing. So um, again, super fun tournament. Team Canada can go the the Team Canada, the, the people who run Team Canada, um, as my friends, as Scott from a uh, Lockdown Canadian said, uh, they can take a long walk off a short pier. But it was it was a super fun tournament, very entertaining. The U.S. Uh, Swedish bronze medal game was absolutely drunk. Um, you know, nine goals in the second period. Great, great, great atmosphere. Great to see these kids uh, playing hard and representing their country as well. So um, that'll be it for me today. Be back. Check your feeds tomorrow. I'm doing a, a small crossover with Ian from Locked On Bruins. Um, he's been with the Locked On since day one. I was you know, a couple months behind, but we have yet to do a crossover. So we thought this would be a good time um, to kind of talk how our teams are doing, um, kind of get you guys ready. So keep an eye out on Saturday morning for that to drop, get you guys ready for the um, game that night. We will be recording on Friday. So if anything crazy happens, um, somebody gets hurt, anything like that happens, knock on wood, Friday night, that won't be in it, but, you know, we, we want to kind of talk about our teams and how they're comparing and, and why this Bruin team is just looks like an absolute machine right now. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. Um, it'll be on YouTube and, and uh, Twitter, or it'll be on YouTube and um, any audio wherever you listen. So um, you can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole, the show on Locked On Sharks on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. At Lockdown Sharks, you can listen, of course, Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, Amazon Music, all those places, right? Um, watch on YouTube as well. And then again, till tomorrow. Bye, friends.